Hello, my lovely viewers, and welcome. I am Kira, a romantic ace, and tonight we are streaming chapter 15 of Perfect Match Book 1. If you haven't joined me before, welcome! I drink and I cuss. If you want to play the drinking game along with me, the rules are right here on the screen. Also, below the player at twitch.tv slash aromanticace. If you cannot read the rules in either spot, go to that website, click on the image underneath the screen, underneath the player, and it will take you to the most recent version of my drinking game rules that you can read in text form. Um, also, if you haven't joined me before, the story so far, so we are playing as Kira, a former resident of New York City, who I'm presuming had some sort of job at some point, um, but is now on the run from the villainous corporation Eros, which was masquerading as a dating service, and turns out they are manufacturing what, for all intents and purposes, appear to be replicants, um, to, uh, and, and they're using the dating service to test how lifelike they are. Um, our, our perfect match, uh, now called Chloe, uh, appears to have legitimately fallen in love with us. Hi, Starblind! <laughs> Up the irons! Uh, but, um, but yeah, she, uh, she, she, she has grown past her, her capabilities, as it were, and Eros knows that we know along with our cousin Nadia, who turned us on to Eros in the first place, and our uh, detective friend Damien and Chloe's handler Sloane, we all know. And they've got to take care of us somehow. Um, we're, we're sure that's going to end well for everybody. Um, so <laughs> they've hauled us off to God knows where on the tundra, and they're in the process of apparently conducting psychological experiments on us. We have no idea where Chloe is. Um, so with that, the stinger for chapter 15 is stuck in a frozen wasteland. Will you and your friends be able to escape from Eros's grasp? <gasps> Let's find out. And again, with the trigger warning, this book contains violence and mature situations. View player discretion is advised. And again, since they trigger warning this and they don't trigger warning Endless Summer, um, possibly take this seriously. <laughs> oh, sure, my built-in mic doesn't seem to be working tonight. No, oh, wait, no, it's working. Okay. So this is chapter 15, Before the Storm. Nadia? And Steve? You tear your eyes from the screen. The one next to it shows Nadia's cell door, not far from yours. I'm coming for you, Nadia. With the guards out of the way, you leave the security room and sprint to where Nadia is being held. What is this place? You glance at the master bedroom on your right. The bed and floor surfaces are covered with rose petals and unlit candles. You hear familiar peals of laughter and follow it to the next room, or to the living room. <laughs> That's cheating! Hey, you can't blame me for having better aim. I mean, he was supposed to be a high school quarterback, so... Nadia and Steve sit face to face on the couch. Steve holds a bowl of chocolate-covered marshmallows, and a battle of crowns plays on the TV. He's so surprised to see you that he accidentally tosses his marshmallow onto Nadia's forehead. Ah! She nearly falls over the couch to catch the marshmallow in her mouth. Wow, Nadia's determined. Okay. You're making me lose on purpose! 
Uh, Nadia, were you expecting company? Nadia whirls around. <gasps> Kira? Um, yeah, Battle of Crowns is one of their covers for Game of Thrones. The other one that I've seen them do is very tongue-in-cheek, The Crown and the Flame, which is another one of their books. Um, that shows up if you play some of the other contemporaries, which I actually find funnier, but. Steve stands abruptly and tidies his shirt. He offers his hand to you. I'm Steve. Steve Tennyson. Nice to meet you. Oh, cool. They, like, wiped his memory, kind of. That's awesome. I'm Kira. Nadia, we can say, what's going on? This is no time for Netflix and chill. Or, can I join you? Hmm. I... <laughs> I'm kind of feeling like Can I Join You has some double entendres here. Uh, I think I'm just going to go with the obvious. What's going on? Does she know? Nadia engulfs you in a crushing hug without thought. Oh, how did you get here? Are you okay? Yeah, but I don't understand. Eros... Nadia clamps your mouth with her hand, looking thoroughly alarmed. Steve looks from you to Nadia. Uh, everything all right? Yep, we're just, uh, gonna go check on our souffles. Yes, Nadia, let's go check on the souffles. Nadia drags you to the kitchen by the elbow before Steve can reply. She speaks in hushed whispers. Don't talk about Eros. Steve doesn't know that this isn't real. Oh, boy. Now let me guess. If we tell him, it's going to, like, break him. That's going to be fun. What? Nadia waves her hand in the air, panic growing in her eyes. <laughs> Eros, we programmed him to think that we've been living here the whole time. Hasn't he tried to get out? It's been less than a day. We were occupied. Wow. Wow. Okay. Yeah, I've noticed. But you're not seriously considering staying, are you? Nadia bites her lower lip. She glances at the living room nervously. Okay, I know that I'm a hermit and all, but I don't honestly think I could stay literally in an apartment for the rest of my life. So, um, yeah, I'm thinking less with that. <sighs> I don't know. I mean, at least here I know he's okay. We're finally, finally together again. We're safe. Um, that's not safety. Safe? But... <sighs> Maybe this isn't the textbook definition of real. Maybe it is just an experiment, but I don't care. If this is our only way to stay alive, then... I do not know what is going on with my, uh, my music mic, by the way. It appears to be picking up my residual voice, but not my mic, so... Or, not my music, so that's odd. Oh well. What about us? And Damien, Sloane, Chloe? Nadia, we can say, Eros won't keep you safe here forever. Doesn't Steve deserve to know the truth? Or, I'm not leaving without you. Um, hmm. I feel like I'm not leaving without you isn't much of a threat, so... Honestly, doesn't Steve deserve to know the truth? Doesn't he? We've been inseparable for as long as I can remember. Please come home with me. No, 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 no. No, no, no. Steve deserves to know the truth because otherwise he's literally living a lie. Like, 
And then, you know, if he finds out years and years later that Nadia knew the whole time, that's just more upsetting. So, no, don't don't ever, like, trick your partner into being with you under false pretenses, especially if they really didn't have a choice. You know, that's even creepier. So please don't do that. Nadia opens her mouth, but you hear Steve approach the kitchen. <laughs> Those souffles looking good? I, I don't know, are they? Nadia strides to his side and curls her arm around her waist. He hugs her protectively before looking at you. You two didn't come here to check on dessert, did you? No, Steve, we came to talk about you. It's fine. <sighs> no. That word you said, it sounds familiar to me. Eros? Yeah, you know, the god of erotic love. That's to totally all we were talking about, Steve. Nothing else. Yeah, those souffles looking good, said no one ever. Yup. Except for Steve. Steve makes good souffles. You turn to Nadia, silently pleading her to see reason. After a moment, she sighs heavily. <sighs> Steve, we had a life before this. Outside of this house. What do you mean? We mean there's people out there capable of completely wiping your memory and inserting a new one and you have no idea. That doesn't scare you at all, does it, Steve? Not even a little. This house isn't real. Eros designed this cell to trap Nadia and wear her down to gain intel. Intel? On what? And why? All good questions. Nadia holds Steve's face in her hands. For our first date, we went to a painting class, and you took me to a candy shop on the way home. In front of my apartment building, there was a wide puddle, and you laid down your jacket so I could cross without getting my shoes wet. That, unless it's a rain jacket, doesn't really work, but okay. Steve's eyebrows knit together as he places one hand atop of Nadia's. After our housewarming party, we made a pillow fort on the roof. A tent with string lights, some music. Aww. And you said, if it's alright with you, I'd love... Seconds tick by excruciatingly before Steve's troubled eyes clear up. I'd love to make you happy for the rest of time. Aww. Poor buddy. Realization slowly dawns on his face. He glances at you and lets out a sad smile. You, that lets out? Okay. Alright. Whatever. Kira. Hi. Hey, Steve. At the airport, I watched you leave, and they... Do we want to know? He flinches and closes his eyes. No, we definitely don't want to know. Okay. They forced me on into a jet, a metal table, and... Oh, yeah. 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 I'm not human. Well, sci-fi has a lot of debate about that, so yeah. Steve. An alarm blares loudly within the house. You hear loud footsteps and shouted commands beyond the door you came from. Yeah, my built-in is definitely not working. Sorry, guys. They're coming! Steve! The security pad by the door! Which they totally can't hack! Steve runs to the door and punches the electronic lockbox beside it. Go! I'll cover for you and Kira. I'm gonna see if I can get that built in to work, meanwhile. 
absolutely not. Okay, this is weird. Come on, what the hell? Is that what you want? Come on. You're fine. 